What's up, everyone? Uh, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be taking apart this baby right here. Um, we're going to start from the front. What I'm going to be doing first is remove the tires, then the uh, fender liners. And uh, there are a couple bolts here holding uh, part of the front bumper. There's a couple bolts connecting to the, uh, the uh, chassis of the car, the like three of them. I have to remove uh, this light over here. There is a screw in the bottom. I have to unplug that. And then after that, that should be free of the front bumper. Um, then I'm gonna remove the hood, uh, headlights, radiator, and most of the front uh, suspension parts. We are gonna leave the interior to the end, uh, mainly because it smells really bad, like there's a very strong chemical uh, smell in there. Uh, we don't know what that is, and uh, it's pretty intense. Uh, to be honest with you, I'd rather deal with the uh, funky smell from the from the log NSX than this chemical whatever. I think it's like gasoline and something else, but uh, it's definitely not a good smell. So we're gonna leave it to the end. We're gonna focus on the front of the car. We're gonna take care of uh, the whole front, and then um, we're gonna start removing sections of the uh, rear of the car. Uh, and then we're gonna leave the uh, the interior and the uh, engine, like we're gonna drop off the engine um, at the end. Uh, so yeah, that's the plan. So let's get to it. This is the bolts that I'm talking about. One. Well, that's one, two nuts, three. And then I have to do the four. I don't know if the camera can pick it up. That one. And that one, so those two. All right, so I'm gonna release those. So I'm gonna start removing that and free up this section of the car. Um, oh, I have to remove this little, there is a... Yeah. There is a hole right under, under the bumper and there's a screw that is holding this, uh, this lens right here. So you can see it here, here, camera, here. All right, so I'm gonna take care of that. <sighs> Here I'm using a long Phillips to remove the screw holding the turn signal in place. Here. Like that. Remove that, pull. Here I'm trying to remove the two bolts and two nuts holding the upper and lower section of the front bumper in place. But this piece of metal is on the way, so I don't know what, what happened there. I don't know what happened there. So I would have to reach somehow that little nut because when I removed other bumpers before it was like close to this bracket that is holding the uh, AC condenser but like this one is behind it uh, kind of strange I still have to figure something out to remove that because it won't go in it took me a bit over an hour before I could remove the bolt holding the upper section of the bumper. It was quite strange for me to see the bolt sitting in that position where it actually sits right next to the AC condenser and not behind it. Okay. 
Tag it and tag it. All right, so that should lose, be loose now. It's very strange because it's behind the, the, this bracket and it's supposed to be a bit more to the left so I can use the tool, but this is right behind it and I had a hard time removing the nut out of this thing. So. All right, so there is three 12 millimeter bolts holding, there is a bracket in the back and that is like hooked to the rails. <clears throat> So I remove those three. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna remove the wheel on the other side first, and then repeat what I did in this side, which is removing two nuts, and there is like a little bolt on this frame right here. And then after that, I'm gonna drop the car and remove the bumper, uh, and then you know, gonna move into the hood and the uh, uh, headlights and the radiator and all the fun stuff, and, and then the fenders. So when it's brand new, I want to get my face off the camera because it's a, You see? You have this little plastic that's attached to it. So you, re, you loosen the... The screw right there, but it won't come out. So the other one is broken, so I would assume that it was removed at some point in time. Uh, but yeah. Same as before, there is a bolt right here. And you remove that. And that release this lower bracket. So I'm gonna show you something. I think the car is being, it says clean title, but see the difference? I have to cover my face, otherwise the camera is gonna look for my face. So this is from the left side. This is from the right side. This one is the one that usually is called the brake, the, the bracket, and this one it isn't. Ask me how I know. So, I guess we're gonna find more new things about this car besides the fire. Uh, cool, so for example, let me show you here. Something is wrong, something is up. And why did I say that? So on the other car, on the other side actually, um, you see, that nut and that nut, they're in easy access, right? On the other side, they're pushed in. Here, here. And I believe that is the reason So I believe that's the reason why that side, the uh, daylight is missing the top. The bolt is it's a mismatch and the nut on top of the uh, the bracket is it was behind the uh, the AC condenser bracket they're supposed to be like right next to it but not behind it so hopefully this one wasn't an accident but so good and move it over here I said before there's one, two, three, one on top, two in the bottom, same here. So I'm gonna do that. After I was done removing the bolts and the nuts from the bumper, I proceed to remove the horns, ambient sensor, and disconnect the windshield wiper hoses that are connected to the bumper. Then I remove the hood and start disconnecting the harness sitting in front of the car. The only problem that I see right now is that uh, this door doesn't open, so I won't be able to remove this fender right here, at least for now, till we figure out how to uh, open the door. 
But if we could open the other door, this one should be just fine. Hmm, it's missing. Told you, this car has been in an accident at some point in time. Because this, this one aligned perfectly how, how I've seen different NSXs before when I take them apart. This one, the bolt that I was connecting the lower bracket was in an OEM bolt. It was a random 10 millimeter bolt. The uh, bracket here, when it goes inside, this one is, it was maybe three millimeters in this way when it should be out, it should be an easy access. It shouldn't be behind the bracket here. So, and it's missing the bolt that is usually sits back here. <sighs> you were supposed to have two bolts one behind the door, well two behind the door, one on top, one on the bottom. And the one on top is missing, so that tells me that this thing has been removed and that might explain why is this fender and the AC condenser, condenser um, the bracket itself is, it was off place. The one to the right, everything was brand new, untouched. Uh, I still have some paint on the bolts. This one was like a generic uh, OEM 10 millimeter bolt. So uh, not a big of a deal, but I guess when, when we take it back to uh, Blackjack in Georgia, uh, I'm gonna have to talk to uh, Adam and uh, tell him to like check the specs on the front rails. Yes, to be on the safe side. So I'm gonna say, oh, here. Yeah. So right here is a, it's a very uh, tight space to reach to remove the bolt. So I, I would assume they, they, for whatever reason, this is not the OEM fender that came with the car and they remove it and then they got lazy and they were like, screw it. And I'm not gonna put it back in, so. That's that. Overall, the fender is pretty solid. Never mind, there is like a little... I have to have my face because it's in a human recognition mode, so right there. There's a little crease on the fender. But nothing we cannot fix. So that's that. Here's one, so the, the, the fender have like, you know, this. You see how it's like behind it? It's really hard to reach, which is not the case on the other side. I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch and then you can see what I'm talking about in this camera. So that's all good, but then that one was missing. After I was done inspecting the driver's side fender, I proceed to start removing the radiator, radiator fan, disconnect the front harness and the coolant pipes. All right, so we have new findings on the car. Uh, it was probably in a small accident. The more we are start digging into this removal of parts, this is the uh, AC condenser, as you can see, it's like completely hanging in there. And it's mainly because, uh, well, besides the fender missing this bolt and then the bolt holding the bracket on the, on the skirt, on the lower bumper, uh, there is this little bracket with a bolt that's supposed to be held by a nut, like that. And it's rusted, so that means that it's been exposed to the elements for quite some time. Uh, also, the there's a hook bracket right here, and it's bent. So I'm gonna use this other camera so you guys can take a look really quick of what I'm talking about. That one right 
right there. And compared to this one, that's straight. You can see it. Put some light on it. Straight. Not straight. You can see even here the welding part. You see how it's together? And this one is not. So, what I want to be doing now is remove the AC condenser uh, both sides, uh, clear the area. In this section, I started to remove the AC condensers, AC receiver and dryer, hood latch, and both of the uh, headlight assemblies. One thing to mention is that when I was removing the front harnesses, the ABS system was completely disconnected from the car. I don't know why, but it was kind of weird that somebody would do that. All right, we're back in the garage. Uh, I left the rotors uh, soaking in PP blaster because they were not moving. I uh, put some heat and I left those rest overnight. So I'm gonna remove those rotors with well, this one and the driver's side, the passenger side. Then I'm gonna remove the, uh, the hub. Like I said before, what I would like to do is just remove the control arms. Uh, and separate that from the uh, steering rack. That way I don't have a lot of pieces like moving around uh, from the suspension part. So, this is what we're gonna do. Remove this, clear this area, remove the arms, sway bar, strut, repeat, uh, and then, I'm gonna start working on the um, ABS system. Remove that. And that should clear most of the front of the car. Because uh, we're gonna reuse the harness. I mean, whatever we can use from, from this harness, half of it is gone, but I think we have a spare for the rear uh, from the uh, engine harness. And, you know, every other miscellaneous that we, we need, we're just gonna have to buy. At this point, I started to remove the driver's side, front hub, upper and lower control arm, struts, sway bar links, and all the other suspension components before I can remove the front subframe. All right, so I'm gonna start working on the passenger side. Uh, just like the driver's side. I'm gonna remove the caliper, caliper bracket, the rotor, then upper control arm, lower control arm, where well, I have to free up the uh, brake line, uh, speed sensor, the uh, tow link, remove all that. Uh, and then after that, I should be all good to go to uh, remove the uh, front subframe and the steering rack. Then when I'm done with that, I'm gonna move to the uh, ABS uh, system and work my way towards the back, you know, remove the, uh, uh, the brake fluid reservoir, uh, the master cylinder and, and all the stuff. So let's do it. After most of the front suspension components were removed, I proceed to clear most of the front harnesses from the car in preparation to the interior removal as well as the engine so we can have a clear chassis to work with. I left the passenger side fender on until we figure out how to open the melted door for the next episode. Thanks for subscribing to the channel. Please don't forget to turn on that notification bell and stay tuned for more because this project is getting better and better.